Warning, this podcast may change the way you think about business, entrepreneurship, and money forever. The Conquistador Podcast was created for dreamers, entrepreneurs, and leaders who want to conquer their future. future, future. To be an epic entrepreneur, you must adopt the right mental paradigms as well as master the art of selling, marketing, and finance. Now, it's time to welcome two serial entrepreneurs, leaders, husbands, and fathers who are passionate about sharing the strategies that are helping them excel in life and in business. Here are Mauricio Garcia and Hubert Humphrey. All right, so we're live once again, and as always, very excited to be able to do this podcast and talk about the things that are, are going to help every entrepreneur out there excel in business. And today we got a very interesting topic, which is why every entrepreneur need to have a recruiter's mentality. And who better to talk about this than one of the best recruiters in history who's built the two largest financial services uh, companies in the, in, the, in the world, my friend, my mentor, Hubert Humphrey. Hubert, how are you today? Great, great to start another week here with everybody. Look forward not only to today's show, but this whole week we've got a, we just got a whole bunch of themes that are that are that are linked together. So I think everybody needs to not only watch this, watch and listen to this one, but listen all week long because they'll get a complete feeling of of how this recruiter's mentality unlocks a, a great future for them. Yeah, and you know, one one of the things I believe people uh, jump to when they hear recruiter's mentality, they may be uh, making a mistake, but just assuming that it's all about just recruiting people and building a downline, but it's it's bigger than that. I think recruiter comes in bringing in talent for your internal team as well as building distribution. But um, how has this recruiter's mentality changed your life? Because I believe it can change the life of everybody who is tuning in today, who is thinking about building something that's significant in any any endeavor that they're in right now. Well, if you've got a recruiter's mentality, what I call a recruiter's mentality, I mean, you've you you, you, you you've got a much better chance to win in life because you can't win in life alone. You've got to have other people somehow, some way joining on your team, whether it's your internal team, whether your employees you're hiring. Uh, hiring is nothing but a recruiting process. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 or if you're persuading partners to join with you financially, whatever you're doing, recruiting is the art of persuading someone to follow you in the same dream and paradigm that you're in and showing them how they'll prosper for doing so. That's just a longer version of what recruiting really is. And so a recruiter's, a recruiter's mentality is a great thing to have, especially in a business like, like, like we're in. And one reason why I've chosen this field that I'm in and this business that I'm in is because, because uh, by, uh, we can get so many different people to come in and join us and leverage their time, leverage their dreams, Leverage their energy, and it makes it makes what we what we want to accomplish so much easier because we we're able to bring them in. Mm-hmm. But uh, to me, it's, it all starts with knowing what recruiting is. Recruiting is the lifeblood of, of of any endeavor. Recruiting, just like your heart's pumping blood, well, if if what happens if that blood gets blocked, or if there's a hardening of the arteries, or there's you get any, heart attack. Anything, anything that stops that blood going, there's going to either be strokes or or heart attack or sluggishness or something. So you got to have that. You got to have that fresh b- blood going in all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and, and if, so, a recruiter's mentality is, is uh it's where it all starts for us in, in my in my business for for sure. You, I wouldn't be sitting here talking today if I did not have a recruiter's mentality. And by the way, a recruiter's mentality doesn't mean that you personally are out doing all the recruiting, but that you're also running a recruiting system whereby many other people in your endeavor can be replicating too. They can, they can be recruiting, who can be recruiting, who can be recruiting. And so it's, a, it's, 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 it's having, it being a do-it-first leader having that mentality, but it's having the mentality yeah. of running a system whereby this, the, the bringing lifeblood New life blood into your business yeah. never stops. You know, one of the things that really clicked in my mind um, by attending the conferences that you put together is that before 
I I saw recruiting as the, just a way to you know bring people that could bring people that could bring people. There wasn't that much of a substance that, quite frankly, I wasn't really motivated to do it until I heard uh, another one of my mentors, Jody Jody Humphrey, who said uh, in one of the conferences, "Look, the business that most of these huge companies are in." is in the business of distribution. And that's when it clicked for me. And I know everybody may have different experience or different moments and times when they get that epiphany. But to me, I finally understood that when you're doing direct sales, is recruiting, it's what is going to advance your distribution channel. I mean, it obviously makes a lot of sense. I'm just sharing my personal experience. It didn't click to me until I understood that if I was... To uh, if I wanted to win big in business, wanted to build a big distribution channel, I needed I, ne- I needed recruiting, and to recruit, I needed the recruiter's mentality. I needed to make that paradigm shift. Right, we're, we're letting people in our business model become be be business people. They're entrepreneurs. They, they, it's like a bunch of people with businesses inside of businesses. Mm-hmm. Now, if you were if you were just looking at a big old company, how does a big old company? Go and build its distribution. Well, it'll it has a human uh, a human resources department and personnel department, and they go and they've got they run ads and they they do all kinds of things. That they go and get certain people who fit certain profiles, and they go through all these different resumes, and they come in and give them these IQ tests, and and and, and they'll, they'll they'll go out and put these people to be salesmen in their company, or or they give them territories or skill sets or come in and train them on their products. They're building their distribution, but a company sort of got a team of people doing that. Uh, 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 that's building distribution. Uh-huh. Uh, that, that, what, what, what we do in our business is that we build our distribution by, by offering people uh, from all walks of life a chance to come in and, 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 and get in business, and they too can start to build their own little sub-distribution team. Those people could do the same. Who could do the same? It's just a magic of compound recruiting and building, building distribution teams under everybody, and that's the chosen way that we found works great for us because it opens up. Every, it opens everybody in the country is potentially a recruit and to a proven different. That mm-hmm. we have such a we have such a viral way of building distribution, and that's what recruiting is. I don't care what company it is, when someone's when somebody's looking at a candidate or a person uh, to, to 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 come in with the purpose of being able to move their products out to the to the consumer that's that's building distribution that's what it's all about i love that uh paradigm shift because i i looked at my uh my resume if i was to present my resume when i first uh, came into the industry i wouldn't have been hired by or even had an opportunity to be doing what i'm doing today maybe um and it's so different then, because obviously most companies which who are recruiting. I mean, I look at uh, the space sectors of the world and the the Teslas <coughs> and all these. Just because Elon Musk obviously is a, is a uh, is a popular entrepreneur uh, right now, and he's obviously recruiting, and companies tend to go in that direction. In in most cases, which like you said, have an internal team, and then they uh, bring all these different talents, and here. Here you are talking about a, 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 a different paradigm, a different way in this industry, which has built to the two largest financial services industry in the world, which is not an easy industry by chance. It's the most regulated industry, right? And and, and still managed to recruit over 2.5 million people and uh, beat the top two or three in their own game. Right, well... You know, just just remember that that, that that no no product, no no matter what product is invented or created, if there's not some type of a delivery system to the consumer, if you can't get it to the marketplace, uh, that product doesn't benefit anybody. It doesn't benefit the people who put their money in it to get the company started. It doesn't benefit the end use, the consumer who needed the product. It's got to be a delivery system. And that's really what recruiting basically at its uh, mm-hmm. at its uh, baseline uh, meaning means. To do that, and uh, I, I look back, I look back many years ago when 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 we were building the the original A.L. Williams company, which li- ended up literally changing the whole life insurance industry, the largest industry in the world. It just changed the the way they they, they approached their selling to the middle America. They, it, it changed 
way uh, Middle America bought insurance. It was just a revolutionary, disruptive force out there. And I remember one, one time uh, New York Life had a big article uh, that they were put, publishing in the Wall Street Journal or something about how they, how they came about building their professional sales force. And it went through this whole uh, litany of things that they did. And they put them through all these, they'd go through, they'd go through a, th a thousand people to get uh, 10 or 15 or 20 good ones. And they'd mm -hmm. go through these resumes and then they would, they would do whatever they would do. And they would end up with this elite sales force, they called it. And mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> of course, in A.L. Williams, we were out there bringing in, bringing in people from all walks of life, giving them a chance to be in business. And, and so <coughs> Art Williams had one of his, 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 his sisters write a letter to them and say, listen, we don't want your 10 or 15 that you keep. We don't need them. Bring us your, give us your other 990 people that you're, you rejected. That's the ones we wanted to put wow. in our system. Wow. And, and so we were building distribution by offering it to everybody. <coughs> mm -hmm. We were, and our, and our way of attracting people into this industry was to, selling them the dream of being an entrepreneur and, and coming in and building building their business, which ended up being distributing these products. So we ended up sure. with a different way of coming about building distribution, but we built it bigger, faster, and we beat all those companies. And uh, distribu having a recruiter's mentality is just a good thing to have. If you're, if, if, you're, if you're in church doing missionary work, trying to build up your church, you're going to need to have to learn how to persuade people to, to, to why they need to come to your church. They need to, mm -hmm. they need you, why, why, if you're trying to do missionary work to convert people to a, to a gospel doctrine, you've got to go and be able to be able to do that. If, mm -hmm. you, if you're trying to find a mate to marry, you've got to be a good, have a good recruiter's mentality. I mean, it, it, it's just a powerful thing to have as a, as, a, as a mentality of how to go and convert people to your way of thinking. That's really what you're trying to do. Yeah, I love the message today. One of the things that I think goes uh, hand in glove with what you're saying is that there is no machine, there is no technology still invented that can measure the heart of a champion. And when you open an opportunity like that, when you have this recruiter's mentality and you really provide an opportunity to everybody and let a system really determine who's, who's, who has the fire in the belly to make it happen, and that's when you reach massive amount of talent that can really go and help you, um, you know, create an explosive distribution channel, which is not what the typical companies do. And so there may be some people right now who are confused, are listening to this, and maybe they've studied the ways that other companies are built and how they set up a CEO and a CFO and a CCO and all these different, you know, structures, which you eventually need. But, you know, and you obviously have to recruit that type of, of talent. But there is probably a lot of other people out there that may not have that, uh, you know, certain experience in the, in, the, in, the, in the resume, but they have a fire in the belly that, uh, that, that nobody knows about until they're given the opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, our, our, uh, our system allows people from all walks of life to come in. And uh, our philosophy is, is to recruit them all and let the system sort them out. And that's, I like that's that. Why, that. That's why we is so the, the the whole framework or uh, infrastructure of our business is built on having a successful system that one finds these people, uh, pers makes the presentation to them, uh, it personally or in a group form. We call it a business opportunity presentation, and it could be by Zoom, it could be in person, whatever it is. But that system reaches out to those people through through the relationships of other people. We just it's a whole connection of friendship borrowing points. Where if I recruit you, you've got people you know, and if we recruit them, they've got people they know. And it's just a concurrent linking up. So we've got a very fast moving viral machine with this system that that does all that, and it brings them through there. And then the people that rise up, who become the leaders, the top the top people at the top levels. It's because the system, the more they, the more they were able to follow that system and use it, it helps sort them out. And you see who puts the most effort and the energy in it. That's 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 really what what it is. And 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 and, and one point we need to make here is that you you can build distribution by being a personal recruiter. You can you, the, the the guy that can build leaders, uh, and, and that who become good at running recruiting systems, uh, and and replicate it faster. Uh, it, it, your team grows faster, 
and, and of course, if, you, if you're going to be recruiting, to have a recruiter's mentality, it's like, like saying a recruiter's mentality is to have a hunter's mentality, a fisher, a great fisherman's mentality. Right. Uh, uh, you you you've got to know the nature of the beast. You need to understand human nature a little bit, mm-hmm, so that mm-hmm, when you're when you're mm-hmm. out trying to 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 uh, to to recruit someone, you've got to have something that appeals to these people. In fact, social media, a lot of what uh, what 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 you you do and 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 a lot of the things we use podcast and so forth as far as for its content, yeah. it, it all that is is you're trying to go out. And, and and put the right message that will uh, that will that will hit the, the sweet spot of most people and cause them to take a look and, and keep taking a look until eventually some of them are going to get interested enough through that through that medium uh, to, to come into our business. That's nothing but a recruiter's mentality. It's just using a technology to go mm-hmm. out and, and, and approach these people and attract them and find them. So without recruiting. Uh, this, 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 this United States of America, this great land of the free, this great free enterprise system that we're allowed to do here, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be anywhere if there wasn't constant recruiting going on by, well, by people yeah. and companies and businesses. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that the most successful companies are the ones that are really good at recruiting. Everybody's recruited and everybody is recruited to something. And so we just got to be careful what you are recruited to. There's three things I want to rescue from this conversation, and one of them is obviously looking internally. There's a lot of people listening to us right now who are thinking about starting a business, already started a business, and they are having to do a lot of the things themselves, whether that is uh, you know, creating all their social media uh, posting and efforts, doing all the accounting internally, all the bookkeeping, even the sales and customer service. And I know you were there at one point, maybe. And I have definitely, I can tell you many times, I was at that point and couldn't graduate from there, couldn't graduate from there because I didn't have the recruiter's mentality. I, I did not understand that I needed to replicate myself quickly enough. Uh, and obviously, I needed to recruit it, to recruit the people. How did you, uh, what would you tell the entrepreneurs out there listening to us right now who are stuck in that, in that uh, space right now, in that situation where they are the ones who are doing it all? When is the time to really go out and start, you know, duplicating yourself? And duplicating, I mean, if you're not, you know, you don't need to be doing the, the booking or you need to be doing the accounting or you don't need to be doing even a lot of the, a lot of the social media things. Uh, maybe you're the messenger, but you don't need to be doing all the other stuff in, in the back end, that kind of, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Well, f- well, first of all, you, it just depends upon what kind of business you're trying to start, what kind of industry you're trying to do, and how much experience and what kind of background you got. Most people, the very few people, are good, going to have what it takes to start up a, a business and it becomes super successful. That's a very romantic sounding thing. Mm-hmm. But the but the but the but the, the the reason why franchises are so good, reason why pe- reason why people would say go be invested or uh, buy a franchise with McDonald's, for example, or, or any of these big franchise operations, is that they they realize that look, I don't want to get bogged down in all that kind of stuff. I want something that's turnkey, something that's formatted, something that's got a system. I just want to go and put my money in it. Somebody else is going to run all that system. All I got to do is plug and play. I got to take what they're doing, just put it out there. And, and, and take their system and follow it and do everything. They, they, buy, they buy all the products, economies of scale, they, we, everything. We, they get to the meat, they get their, their drinks, they get everything they do is formatted. There's a trade name. They don't even have to think. They just got to copy, do, plug and play. That's why they'll join something bigger than themselves and they'll go out and put several hundred thousand dollars or a million into a franchise because they didn't want to do all that kind of stuff. Or they could come into a to, to, to go join sort of a, a traditional agency in financial services, or they can go join uh, something. Else. But but it, that's why we have our business for people to come in. And they and they they don't have to buy a franchise, but they get to come into our business. And we we have, it's built by entrepreneurs for future entrepreneurs, and we got everything in there, plug and play that they need, and they don't have to do all that stuff. They just got to go focus on the main thing, which is prospecting, contacting, recruiting people, and then replicating that over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and, and motivating them, I should say. But mm-hmm. it, it, you need to simplify to multiply. And it, the, the, the people now that are going to try to start up their own businesses and everything, 
they have got to learn how to delegate or, or stagnate. They're going to have to find some way to get some people that could come in and take care of these things. They, 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 they can take care of their, their, their finances, can t take care of their books, that can, that can go and do some of these things. But it takes money to go and hire those people to do all that. So, but but you but if you if you work in, if you spend all your time down in your business and, and doesn't leave you any time to work on your business, uh, then you don't know where you're going. Well, you know, seeing a blind, well, the blind lead the blind. They both yeah. fall in the ditch because both of them are both of them are blinded by they're blinded by why? Because they're both down into the, into their business and they can't get have vision and see where they're going. Yeah, one of the things that works for me is probably that oh the reason i would say that things have been good for me is because i first uh decided to learn the skill to be a good salesperson and understood i was in marketing business the minute i understood that i wasn't in the insurance industry but i was more into marketing industry that's when things really changed for me internally when you're still in the entrepreneurial stage but you still haven't really built a you know a solid business per se, then uh, one of the things that worked for me is nowadays there's so many different uh, places where you can go and hire people by you know little projects. And I, I put a lot of people to the test, like people that would help me in the technology space, people that would help me with the finances, people that are going to help me with the social media. And I would give them a lot of different little you know, little tests, and those that really performed much better. I would give them more and more little tasks until they actually became part of the of the team. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, they don't necessarily need to go out there and hire uh, in a traditional way, uh, but maybe, you know, give some of these people out their little projects because it doesn't put that big of a commitment financially on you, but it does help you. First of all, find talent, and second, learn uh, at least begin to delegate and let other people do the things that are bogging you down. At least that's what uh, has worked for me really well up to, to a point that uh, I found four, five, six people now that are doing things from the technology to the accounting to the paperwork, secretarial, yada, 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 all those different things that are out there. And then on the other side is being able to, to in our business, the financial services industry, building distribution, is selling the dream, selling people on the idea that they too can build an agency uh, that can reach nationwide or even continental wide because see, um, we're, we're building Mexico, U.S., and Canada with something like this. That's what's pretty much been my, my um, in a nutshell, what I've done to be able to not get bogged down, like you said, into having to do everything. But it always had to do with recruiting, and having that well, recruiter's well, mentality. Yeah, you've got you've got to you've got to be able to find those people and persuade them to to follow you and what you're doing, and, and to be able to even go through the little testing things that you're doing to become assistance to you because it's you you, you you're not building they're not building distribution they're building support for distribution. Right, good, it's and, got uh, to. And, and, and that's 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 a different element there in all. Every business has got to has got to have has got to have that. Most of the people that succeed in our business, they don't even have to get a, get all of those types of things because that's all taken care of in, in on a bigger scale. That is great. Yeah, that, that we do this. So so we I don't want to confuse people. There, there's a, there, there, there's a if you want to be a smaller entrepreneur and do what the things you're trying to do, and, and it, the reason why you're you're, you're successful and will succeed is you're you're just so. You, you, you're a serial entrepreneur who's just going to work 24 hours a day and just do the work of 50 people, and get, and you're going to get some people in, in the business. But the, a lot of people are not going to be able to copy what you're doing. The key is what is what you're doing duplicatable, and do you need does it need to be duplicated to, to build your distribution team out there? Sure. And uh, some models need to be duplicated, and some. Some don't. It just depends on what, what type of business model we, we, you're trying to build out yeah. there. I, I was trying to go, uh, the message I was really trying to give is that the element is similar as far as you have to be able to sell the dream. Like, no good talent is going to want to be part of something that isn't yeah. going to make them feel like they're part of something huge. The best right. talent and the best people only come to or gravitate to those entrepreneurs or to those opportunities that make them feel that and not just make them feel but it's truly 
a platform for them to take off and go and reach whatever it is that they want in life. And but for, for that, somebody has to sell them that dream. That's right. And so that That's having right. having the recruiters mentality prepares you mentally to create the messaging uh, so that is so appealing to people that they want to join you, your cause, your mission, your crusade. That's right. That's right. That's and you're 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 just persuading them. That's all you're doing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just the art of persuasion. I mean, you, a real good entrepreneur. If you're married with a family, you've got to go and sell your family on the dream of allowing you enough time and effort and energy to succeed. So you got to you got to recruit your family to to, to 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 what you're trying to follow. So it's it's persuasion. That's what it is. Uh, that the the people who get along in life are the great persuaders. The the people that can get people to. To, to believe in what they believe in and follow them, I mean, whether it's hiring them to be an assistant or, or whether it's uh, to building a distribution team out in the field with a bunch of entrepreneurs who are replicating. Having a recruiter's mentality is a powerful, powerful tool. And you, you know, if, 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 you're, if you're trying to get in and get a good table at a great, great res, restaurant, you better have a good recruiter's mentality and know how to persuade that uh, maitre d' to let you in and go over and be able to get you a good table when a lot of people can't get in for that. For that. So it happens that anything you try to do, yep. you better be a good recruiter. Now, that's on the on the outside. I think there's a, a deeper level to this thing, and I want to get it uh, out. I think it's a deeper, a deeper level. Um, what I mean by that is that there was a time in your career that that epiphany came into your mind and you said, okay, I'm going to, if I, I have this great opportunity here and I can only make it that big if I go out and recruit and recruit as many people as I can into it because it's that, it's that big of an opportunity. And if you were to tell every entrepreneur out there who needs to adopt this recruiter's mentality, what is really that higher law when getting, or getting to having that recruiter's mentality, changing that paradigm that we, we, we need to have with total clarity to be successful recruiting the people that we need to bring into our business? Well, when you, when you recognize how big the opportunity is, that's the paradigm. That's, that's mm-hmm. the, the epiphany is when you can see, oh, my gosh, this is a monstrous opportunity, and, and, and I just have got to build something big enough to go and uh, take advantage of it and participate in it. That, that's what you got to do. Then you got to figure out, what in this particular field I've chosen, this venture I'm in, what have I got to what have I got to have to be able to harvest that great opportunity? And if it's recruiting a big sales force and developing a bunch of leaders mm. that can manage you, mm-hmm. then you then you go you go you go build it to the scale that it has to be. Okay, and, so and, so and you got to see it. You got to see, see it. You're it. saying people. Sometimes you could be at this great opportunity, but if you don't see it, you're just not gonna get that recruiter's mentality. Well, That's what I'm getting out of. If you don't see it, if you, if you don't see it, you're not even gonna attempt to do it. Right. When there's no vision. The people perish, as the scripture says. So you you got to see it, but but you don't see it all at one time. I mm-hmm. didn't. I didn't have one big epiphany. I, I had a. I had. A, I had an epiphany on top of an epiphany on top of another epiphany on top of. Another, and, and today, even today, I've got a whole another layer of vision mm-hmm. beyond what I ever dreamt of, and I've dreamed some pretty big dreams over the years, uh, because I'm at a higher vantage point. The higher you, the higher you get up the mountain, uh, the more clearer the picture of mm-hmm. what the top of the mountain could look like. You know, mm. if you're down at the bottom, man, that top of that mountain, every time I want to get up there. And, and, and next thing you know, you're just going. How can I just get a base camp started? Well, then all of a sudden, how can I get another camp started? As you go up the deal, you, you're seeing, you get to see more and more. Uh, you're standing on the shoulders of the success of the past, and that's what you're doing here constantly. So always, uh, you, you just got to be green and growing. And, and the way you're green and growing is to constantly have your vision stretched, because if it's not stretched, uh, well, let, let, let's everything stretch it. Stops. Let's stretch it, because I would, I believe, that a lot of the people listening today got into entrepreneurship or they want to start their own businesses, but they're probably just looking at a smaller scale. How do I just fire my boss and replace my income in my own terms? Most people, I believe, are not thinking like, I'm going to go out there and build this you know, uh, multinational organization, even a nationwide, even a statewide, if you know, 
uh, for that matter, they're not thinking like that. And un- unless they really see it, then they're going to adopt that massive, aggressive recruiter's mentality. And so how do you how do you do that? How do you stretch that vision to people to say, it doesn't matter what product or service you've got. It can, if, it's, if it's solving a problem, you, can, you don't have to keep it locally. You don't have to keep it within your block. But rather go out and do it nationwide. And to do that is there's a lot of people, look, there's enough people out there looking for opportunities to be able to do this. And just like we're doing with, with Hegemon Group International. Right, I mean, well, most people, most agents, sometimes go in business. They want to, they want to build a little agency and have two, three agents, right, buy a little franchise agency. But here's this other paradigm which say, no, you can actually, being on the right platform, you could go and do build this multinational. And so, well, what, 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 what really, in my, in my case, uh, I always knew, even when I was out working on the railroad and never had been in anything like this. I knew that the insurance industry was the largest industry in the world. I knew it was big. Uh, mm-hmm. I knew a lot of guys could make a lot of money in it, but I couldn't. I couldn't let my vision go there or think anything about it because I did not have a vision of any way that I could could get into it. I didn't have any vision of how I could have the resources to do it. So it never. It never could become something that. That, 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 it, that I internalized in my heart and mind. But once I found uh, uh, the beginning of a, of a platform and, and, and that Art and these guys had set up some things that, and, and had a concept that I, I thought was viral, and then I had learned a distribution mode of, of recruiting and building that would fit that, and I could sense that this could, this could be, this, this was a perfect fit, and it was something I could do, it didn't take a lot of money, it didn't take a, a lot of experience, all and all the barriers to entry for normal entry for business were removed, and and I saw all that that got me excited to at least get started. Then as it started to take root, I could see that man, this is going to work, mm-hmm. and I and I'd see a bigger vision, bigger vision. Mm-hmm. But but I saw but I saw the means by which somebody like me could actually get into it, could get it going, to take the next steps, to take the next steps. Yeah, every, see, I like right now. I, I know that if somebody could go out and cure cancer, man, it, he'd be the richest man in the history of the world. Well, right. I can't get too excited about trying to go do that right now because I don't know of any means by which I could go and start to pursue that. Even though it's a monstrous opportunity, uh, I could mm-hmm. go out there and create a, 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 a rocket ship to go to the moon since uh, NASA wasn't building any. Well, well. Well, that's what Musk did. He goes and right. does SpaceX. Well, but you, you're just not going to – he found he, – but he only did that because he had become wealthy. Uh, yeah, he had Tesla. the means now. He had the yeah, means. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. The, you, the vision of the means has to come to, to you at a given time. And mm-hmm. That's why at the very beginning for new entrepreneurs, uh, you need to find something that uh, – that can open up to you. And a business model like what we use is a perfect one for, for beginning entrepreneurs. Now, down the road, if, if something opens up and you start to have more resources and you see yourself, that, 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 that changes. But it, the, the vision is not just the vision of the end game, but the vision of how in the world could I even get in that business? How could I even get it started? That, that, right. has, to, that has to be something that's believable and comes inside your heart and mind or you won't ever, you won't ever go do it. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know which other way I would have been able to build some of the technology things that we build, some of the apps that we have built to uh, diversify our, our portfolio if it hadn't been for this opportunity for the financial industry. Because that is the way I look at it. It's, uh, now that you were mentioning Musk, he had this, you know, sell this little video game first and then move into the next thing that became a bigger thing and sold that. And that gave him the money to do to this other thing that... Uh, is you know that it, it it led into now what Tesla and SpaceX is, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a 30 40 year in the making of you know being expanding into something bigger, uh, but when you talk about a platform, I I don't see a better place to start entrepreneurship than in the financial industry because that's the route I took, and it has led me into being able to fund other things that now promise. Uh, you know, an even an even greater greater future, um, and so you know, just to wrap it up, finally, what would what would be the last thing you would tell those driven, determined dreamers out there 
when it, you know anything that that uh, we may be missing on this conversation about adopting a recruiter's mentality. I don't think uh, I, I don't think there's anything else to say other than it, that, that just to remind them that that it's with, without it you're not going to be able to to to, to recruit the people the, the the internal staff the distribution team the the the, the investors the, in all whatever kind of business you're in without that kind of a persuasive skill set that you and it's not a hard skill set to develop you you just got to believe in what you're doing. Uh, there's no saying, just set yourself on fire with enthusiasm, and when the crowd gathers to watch you burn, recruit them into whatever it is you're doing. That, that's how simple it is. Uh, it's, it, 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 they, but you but you got to get yourself on fire with enthusiasm and uh, of about something you're going to do, and you'll be able to persuade other people to, to join you. I'm sure you will. Well, there you have it, everybody, coming from an entrepreneur, a business owner who's built, I'll say it again, over the last th uh, th three decades, he's built three huge distribution channels in the financial services industry. And, uh, you know, if, if we're going to listen to somebody, we've got to be careful who we're listening to. And in this case, we heard from somebody who probably a system has recruited over 2.5 million, maybe 3 million people. And it's created uh, wealth for many, 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 many people out there. And he's at it again. And uh, with that being said, I also want to remind you that the sponsor of this podcast is Hegemon Group International. If you want to get into a platform that is already turnkey, that is going to help you increase your income. It can help you get to where you want to be financially. Well, you have to check out the best opportunity in America today. That is Hegemon Group International. And to see what the opportunity is all about, all you need to do is go to hgiopportunity.com. That is hgiopportunity.com. Go check them out and change your life. Hubert, we'll see you in the next podcast. All right. Thanks. See you guys. Warning, this podcast may change the way you think about business, entrepreneurship, and money forever. The Conquistador Podcast was created for dreamers, entrepreneurs, and leaders who want to conquer their future. future, future. To be an epic entrepreneur, you must adopt the right mental paradigms as well as master the art of selling, marketing, and finance.